Shall we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Why don't we? And I'm going to let you in to a bit of a showbiz secret now, yeah? We all know him as a little person in films, but... I don't know if I should be saying this, but it's all fake. CGI. Costs millions of dollars. He's actually as tall as me. Isn't that right, Vern? Sure. It is. OK, let's please get him out. Will you please welcome Mr Vern Troyer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Back to the CGI. Come on in, sir. Thank you. Come on on. That's it. Great to have you here. Thank you for joining us, Vern. No problem. Wow. Uh, you know, it's not going to surprise you, but you are the least big person I've had on the show. Wow, that's cool. How many... Uh, <laughs> well, are there many people uh, your size? Because you're, you know... Um, I'm a, a rare type of dwarf. Uh, it's called cartilage hair hypoplasia. And, um, you know, I don't know if you heard of Billy Barty. Um, he was also in the show business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm the same type as him. So it's, you come, come out... I mean, <laughs> you, you're born kind of proportioned. And, um, you know, you look pretty much normal, yeah. except for being small. Well, you, but uh, what an incredible career you've had. And I guess, you know, to a large part, it's come to you because of your height. I mean, you know, yeah. you, well, you would have succeeded... take advantage of what you have. Yeah, I'm sure you would have succeeded uh, either way. But, I mean, uh, remarkable. I mean, obviously, the Austin Powers movies we all know and love. Uh, but when did you first get in the show business? When did that start for you? Um, I moved to Texas. I was, like, 23, 24. And um, I got a call about, you know, somebody needing a, a stunt double for a nine-month-old baby. Somebody that was... A, some, <laughs> somebody that was agile enough. And be, the, the movie was called Baby's Day Out. I don't know if you've seen it. But uh, I did all the stunts. The baby gets into trouble, you know, in the city, and so... But stunt work is pretty uh, arduous. Did you train for that? Did you have uh, health training for that? Or were you already just you pretty robust anyway? Uh, growing up, my dad was... Uh, uh, he didn't treat me any different than my brother and sister, who are average size. My parents are average size. So I had to do everything that they did. And, uh, you know, it just physically made me strong and made me confident and, you know made me like, you know, I, I don't... See, I don't really look at me being small. But that's a great approach your dad had there, because, you know, you can see why some parents, they, they might think, OK, you know... Yeah, we we'll, want to baby them. Yeah, yeah, we'll be careful here, but, but it's great that, you know, you yeah, treat my, you exactly the same and tough and My dad kicked my ass, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was school for you? Were you did you school because of your height, or was it pretty yeah, OK? It, it, I mean, in grade school, it was a little bit difficult, but, you know, there's a, an incident where, you know, there was a kid, he was, like, two years younger, and a lot taller than me. <laughs> and um, he called me the M-word. And that's the wrong thing to say. So, you know, I didn't even say anything back. I just jumped up, punched him in the nose. Wow. And he started bleeding. That's pretty good move. And he stopped doing it. Yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> I bet he did. I guess you had a, a pretty much a kind of average teenage life then. Did you, you go out with your friends, you'd go out drinking, you'd go out meeting <laughs> women, you'd go out driving, you did all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Did you, did you... <laughs> when I was a teenager, I used to drink quite heavily. I'm not overly proud of that, but it's a, a rite of passage. Oh, shit happens. Drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you a big drinker when you were... Um, I wasn't a big drinker, you know, every now and then, but, you know, what was great is, uh, uh, you know, I was able to hang out with my friends and, uh, you know, actually, you know, I was voted homecoming king. Uh, for our homecoming for the football team. And that's a big deal. We don't really have that over here, but I know it's a big deal. It's like, that's like prom queen and, and homecoming. And that, that's prom the thing. king, yeah. So, so that was a, so a pretty good experience for you then? Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't really get treated any different when I was in high school. I mean, I walked to class. I did everything everybody else did. Yeah. Um, uh, and where did you go to school? What part of the country was that in? Uh, a really small town. It's called... Uh, Centerville, Michigan. Centerville, Michigan. That even sounds more. That sounds like something <laughs> from the 50s to me. Because uh, there's only like 15,000 uh, 15, people. So it's very, very small. We just got our first Burger King. Wow. <laughs> so you must keep it. You must be one of their most famous sons, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> do, they, do they pay homage to you? Is there a statue of you anywhere? Do they have yeah. you on the stamps? What do they do? Um, they gave me a parade, um, which was small. <laughs> I guess fitting. But they have a sign on each end of the town, of picture of me saying hometown of you know Vern Troyer. Right. So. Yeah, uh, and uh, cool. are your mum and dad still there? Do they still live there? Yeah. Wow. So that's great. Then you go back and see them often. 
Uh, every Thanksgiving, my mom's, you know, Thanksgiving dinner meal is like unbelievable. But it's incredible because you are globally famous now, so you know you're you're a proper movie star. And what's exciting is, and we'll maybe talk about Austin Powers, moment, but you have a new movie coming out, and this is probably, am I, is, it, is it fair to say this is the biggest part you've had in the film because you're you're pretty much a, one of the major characters in this. Yeah, uh, it, it was a little bit different, you know, because I'm doing drama, but also being sarcastic like I am. Yeah. And uh, it, it was a great experience, and uh, I just hope everybody enjoys it when they see it. It's, uh, I've seen it already. I want to see it again, because uh, there's, a, there's a story behind the film which kind of distracts you a little bit. Not that much, but I was looking at it in some way. Because, of course, this is the film, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, which was the film that Heath Ledger was making when, when tragically, he died young. Yeah. Uh, he was taken from us. And so, of course, they, they had to reshoot, and, and this story has been reported. Other actors, friends of Heath and friends of his family, stepped in to fill in the role. And it kind of works because of yeah. the peculiar nature of the movie, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, um, you know... It, 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 it's hard. I, I don't really want to say this, but it's almost like it was meant to be because it flows so well. Um, I'd rather have Heath through the whole thing. Of course. Um, but for some reason, it 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 worked. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, even though I said it's tragic, he's not there. But you have now a film which has Heath Ledger in, which is a marvelous, and it's it's directed by Terry Gilliam, brilliantly. And yeah. you have uh, Johnny Depp in the film now, as well as Jude Law and Colin Fowle filling in as well. So it's a, it's an even better cast than it was before. Yeah, amazing, Christopher but, uh, Plummer. I mean, he's a legend. Yeah, he, um, and he is tremendous in it. But it must have been your heart must have sunk, and everyone must when, when on, on the film just knowing that someone who who I guess you'd you'd got to know pretty well by then yes, was taken I, from you. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was tough. Uh, you know, I'm sure everybody else felt the same way as I did. Uh, I just couldn't believe it, and um, it was hard to go back to work. You know, because of you're used to seeing Heath when you're talking, and he's not there. Very sad. Very. Um, you have a tattoo. Is that that's in memory of, of Heath? Is that yeah? Right? Um, this is a heart. I don't know if you can see it. Um, he scribbled a, a heart at the end of his email address, and uh, I got the exact duplicate. It's scribbled, so it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just uh, respect to Heath, honor Heath, and um, just remember. Well, also, you know, it's, that's obviously a lovely gesture, and also it's lovely that you're in this film together as well. That's a nice thing to oh, leave behind. Great honor. Uh, and I think you're just terrific in the film. I really do. <laughs> and it's so nice to see you given a, a bit more to do than often you are. Uh, you play a character called Percy. Have a look at this. Uh, and the film just looks stunning. I mean, this is, let's have a look at the trailer of the movie so you can see the scope of it, because there's some incredible visuals in it. This is uh, a little taste of the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure when that opens. Uh, do you know when that opens? Um, the premiere is October 6th. That opens on October the 16th, well, over here. Uh, okay, th yeah, the actual opening. Yeah, uh, it's a funny film, and it's some wonderful, as I said, it's visual imagination, it, is, it cannot be equaled. Um, we know you, of course, you mentioned comedy, but we know you best for, as Mini-Me. Yeah. Uh, the world over, I mean, I, I, those movies were a hit just about everywhere, weren't they? <laughs> it's unbelievable, yeah. Will um, there be another one? Because, you know, the appetite is there for it. People would want to see it, if you get it right, and I, I imagine you would. I would, yeah. Um... There's rumours, but maybe. <laughs> uh, well, well, what does that mean? I, I think Mike put pen to paper. So he's writing one? I, that's the rumour. <laughs> Stop I, 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 messing with our minds. <laughs> I got to. I'm going off you right now. <laughs> uh, five minutes ago, I wanted to be your friend. Now, I don't care. Meet me outside. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to get a bloody nose, Vern. I know what you like. Uh, no, I know so you, the, can't, you I know, can't be committed to I this. I know where the area is. I don't need it uh, punching the nose. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's a jam. Yeah. It's, it's hanging a lot lower than it used to, though. You might want to... Oh, it's still so punched down. Go, go near the knees. Um, uh, so, so, in the, there's a chance that we might see another Austin Powers movie. Yeah, I believe so. I mean... You know, The Love Guru was a great experience, and uh, for me, I thought it was funny. Uh, but I think Mike, you know, really enjoys doing the Austin Power, right. so I think, you know, it will be back, and I would love to be back in it. He's quite an unpleasant and evil character, Minnie, isn't he? Do you, do you enjoy that side of him? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, let's have a look at the clip. Yeah, here's Vern as Minnie Me. Oh, you want to be friends? <laughs> Minnie Me. <laughs> you know, uh, what was really great was uh, I actually was in that pillowcase, but uh, <laughs> they gave me like a hockey, you know, goalie hat. So and he, he hit me so many times. I 
got a headache. <laughs> so he was actually whacking the pillow? Oh, yeah, and he hit me with a pan and everything. <laughs> Is it true I heard that you're sitting there, you're going to start writing your life story, you're going to put pen to paper? Yeah, um, we actually started uh, an autobiography. Uh, we just got, like, three chapters done. So we're in the beginning process of doing that. Um, and there'll be a lot of stories, and uh, a lot of it will probably involve the Playboy Mansion. So, oh, no, how? So you've been to the Playboy Mansion? Oh, I'm, I'm a regular. What the what? I go all the time. You go all the time? Heff invites you to the Playboy Mansion. I, I go there whenever I want. Yeah, you dirty little man. <laughs> what, 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 what goes on at the Playboy Mansion? Is it just, uh, is it what we imagine or is it... Pretty much. What the what? <laughs> and what, if you get a chance to go and if you're in L.A. Hang on, what do you mean if? Wait, wait. Someone I know could put a word in for me now, couldn't they? <laughs> exactly. What I'm saying is, if you're in L.A. and there's a party going on, I'll get you in. And can I bring the wife and kids? No. Why? <laughs> not I'm not going without them. Uh, <laughs> where's the, uh, for those who are your single men, of course, for those who are single men, uh, where's the fun place to hang out at the Playboy Mansion? Hmm. Be called the Grotto. We call it the Grotto. <laughs> Might I suggest that's the title of your autobiography. We call it the Grotto. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good, you, nice, thank you, you. You hang out in the Grotto? Yeah, um, it, a lot of things happen there. <laughs> Well, I only hope their filter system is adequate. <laughs> <laughs> but then, congrats on getting the invites to the, to the Grotto. Hef seems like a smart guy. I've met him once or twice. He seems like a nice guy. Oh, he's very nice. Okay. Uh, as indeed are you. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you, uh, Are you going to stay and uh, stick around and watch Shakira with me? Definitely. I would have thought so. Why wouldn't I? Exactly. <laughs> what sane man would leave now? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you to Mr Vern Troyer?